floor this afternoon. Let me first of all introduce you our uh, keynote speaker, our latest keynote speaker of this afternoon, Mrs. Natasha Serdoc, co-founder of International Leaders Summit and co-founder and chairman of the Adriatic Institute for Public Policy. With a background in business, corporate banking and public policy research, Natasha has written and delivered speeches and presented high-level briefings on economics, investments, justice, security, trade, and reform issues. Natasha received her Master in Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude, from Bentley University's McCallum Graduate School of Business, Waltham. For five, five years, Natasha Serdoc was a regular contributor to the Economist Group's Economic Intelligence Unit. Was a, she was also a corporate banker with Bank Austria, Credit Anstalt, and HVB Bank Group in Zagreb, Croatia. Natasha Serdoc co-authored a book with Jolal Anand Sami for Croatia and Southeast Europe titled Flat Tax, the Case for Tax Reform. I give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Well, it's a great pleasure to be in Jerusalem in Israel. And thank you so much for coming. Our freedom starts with the law the law that is applied equally to all and whereby nobody is above the law. The rule of law provides certainty to plan our economic activities knowing that our work will be rewarded and we will be able to amass property which will be protected by law. A Milton Friedman Nobel laureate in economics recognized that property rights is the most basic of human rights and an essential foundation for other human rights. One of the definitions of economic freedom is that the highest forms of economic freedom should provide an absolute right to property ownership, full freedom of movement for labor, capital, and goods, and an absolute absence of coercion or constraint of economic activity beyond that which is necessary for the protection and maintenance of liberty itself. The countries which are upholding the rule of law and have high levels of economic freedom are able to sustain high rates of economic growth, or GDP per capita, for a long run. Lack of economic freedom is one of the major factors in regional conflicts and economic instability. People who are lacking economic freedom are moving to more economically free countries. Communist regimes, dictatorships, and totalitarian regimes so we call them rogue state and mafia states, espouse a rampant corruption, absence of the rule of law, and do not provide protection of property rights. These regimes deprive their citizenry of economic freedom and can cause regional conflicts and economic instability. Lack of economic opportunity and inability to prosper creates disenchanted youth and sense of hopelessness which leads to the fertile ground for terrorism to breed. The Balkan Wars of the 90s, Arab Spring, war in Ukraine, mass immigration from totalitarian regimes in Africa into Europe, migrations from South and Central America to the United States and countries of North America, can be explained by respective regimes depriving people of their economic freedom. The lack of economic freedom is also manifested in the recent migrations from Syria and as we hear from Pakistan, Afghanistan and other places to Europe where the migrants are coming as economic migrants or refugees fleeing the war. This is the Balkan route. It, it has existed for decades. And now we see the same route being used by migrants coming into Europe. The coexistence of rampant political corruption and organized crime in post-communist Eastern Europe, combined with money laundering, which is facilitated by Western banking and corporate entities, have been major factors in regional conflicts and economic instability. Sanctions against Iran which U.S. State Department describe as the most active state sponsor of terrorism, have been regularly obstructed by the same Western actors. 
The Balkan route has been used by organized crime and terrorists for arms, drugs, human and organ trafficking, and terrorism financing. UN reports indicated that Balkan heroin trafficking brings in more than $20 billion annually, providing financing for Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah. Kalashnikovs from the Balkans were used in the January 2015 attacks, killing 17 people. All the countries that are lying on the Balkan route are rated as repressed in the rule of law category of the freedom of corruption and protection of property rights by the Index of Economic Freedom published by the Heritage Foundation. Based on the report by Washington DC-based Global Financial Integrity, the countries in the Balkans lost over 112 billion in illicit financial outflows via crime, corruption, tax evasion in a 10 period of time, from 2001 to 2011. Based on the same GFI report, developing and emerging economies lost $6.6 .6 trillion in illicit financial flows via crime, corruption, tax evasion from 2003 to 2012 with illicit outflows increasing at a staggering average rate of 9.4% per year, roughly twice as fast as global GDP. Decades of experience and research in economic development and transition economies provide a clear template of principles needed to achieve higher levels of economic freedom and economic growth. Using the Heritage Foundation's methodology, Index of Economic Freedom classifies these principles in four broad categories, over which government typically exercise some policy control. Rule of law, government size, regulatory efficiency, and open markets. These categories incorporate 10 specific components of economic freedom. In contrast with a narrative on reform preferred by the EU, which focuses mostly on governmental compatibility with EU norms, which in some cases actually hinders economic freedom rather than enabling it, this index seeks to answer the questions of essential interest to the average person. Does the government let me keep my money or does it confiscate it much in taxes? Is private, is private property protected? Can I get a job easily? If I run a business, can I employ and lay off people when I have to do that? Can I buy and sell easily within the country and across its borders? Does the government compete against private business or does it want them to thrive? Shall I be able to enforce my contract? How important is corruption in this picture? Looking at the Index of Economic Freedom scores, uh, here are the best performers. One of them is New Zealand, and we have a former New Zealand minister here with us on the panel, so he can share more about New Zealand's experience. These are the most repressed countries in the world. Here we see that those that achieved the highest economic freedom score ever, and one of them was Israel, that moved from a moderately free to mostly free country just in the previous index, 2015 Index of Economic Freedom. Achieving high levels of economic freedom it doesn't just mean to have higher GDP per capita and reducing poverty, but we see that other qualities of life, such as life expectancy, literacy, education, and standard of living increases parallelly. Governments that choose policies that increase economic freedom place their societies on the pathway to more educational opportunities, better health care, and higher standards of living. With democratic governance is by empowering people to exercise a greater control of their daily lives, economic freedom nurtures political reform, whereby individuals can gain resources necessary to challenge entrenched interests and compete for political power which leads to more pluralistic societies. All 10 categories of economic freedom are within the domain of government policy. The combination of legislative framework and government policies can be pursued to increase economic freedom for each country's citizens. According to the methodology of the Index of Economic Freedom, a country can achieve higher level of economic freedom if the following conditions are fulfilled. 
so there are 10 categories of economic freedom. We can see now first five of them. So establish an independent judiciary and the rule of law in order to protect property rights. Shine a bright light on corrupt practices and eliminate them. Reduce taxes, cut government spending, simplify the process to start, operate, and close the business. Enable employers and employees to freely contract the terms of employment. Maintain price stability through low inflation and allow market pricing to prevail. Eliminate tariff and non-tariff barriers. Enable domestic and foreign actors to invest in all sectors and to compete freely without barriers. And enable greater competition of the financial market and encourage capital market development by minimizing government interference. One of the most important prerequisites for achieving high level of each of 10 economic freedoms is the rule of law. Again, the law has to be applied equally to all. And no individual, no organization, and no company should be favored. Furthermore, corruption has to be punished. The index illustrates that it is essential to create opportunities for all and favoritism for none. According to the 2015 Index of Economic Freedom, a democratic and free market bastion in Middle East region, Israel ranks 33rd globally and fourth in the Middle East North Africa region. Israel has achieved its highest score ever in the 2015 index. Sustained improvements in property rights and regulatory environment over the past five years have propelled Israel into the ranks of mostly free economy. Anything above 80 is considered as free economy, so that's a very good score in trade freedom that uh, Israel has. And let us just look at uh, some comparison analysis with the countries that we know are presented in the audience. On property rights, we see that New Zealand is the best, going down to uh, Israel, but uh, when I say all these are in the category of mostly free and free societies or economies, so these are very good grades for property rights. Freedom from corruption has a larger range. We see again New Zealand is, has the best score. Uh, Czech Republic, uh, probably legacy of communism with uh, being repressed in the category of corruption. Yeah, maybe you, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> then um, fiscal freedom, we see the Czech Republic is leading and that's uh, probably because of the flat tax because uh, fiscal freedom usually talks about uh, level of taxes and, and um, overall tax burden on the citizens. Uh, Belgium is in a repressed category as well as uh, France. Government spending, all these, all these uh, countries uh, we see, they're all repressed. I mean, the first one is USA, which is on the verge of repressed economy, and all under USA is repressed. So I think that Belgium with 2.5, I, I think this is the lowest score for anything given at, in index of 2015 of Index of Economic Freedom. Business freedom, we see quite good results for all the countries. Labor freedom, we see that uh, France is in the, in the level of repressed, meaning there are obviously restrictions to, to, to employing and laying off in individuals that are employed. Monetary freedom is very, very high uh, levels in all countries, so mostly free and free. Trade freedom is very good in all the countries, free. Investment freedom is also very well rated in all the countries. This is all above free, mostly free and free. And the question, what can we do? Uh, looking at uh, the region and uh, how do we increase economic freedom? How do we get other countries to increase their economic freedom score and economic freedoms in the countries? Uh, we have to trade. We have to trade. And I just wanted to share with you that uh, South Carolina governor, Republican Nikki Haley, signed into law a bill which prevents public entities from contracting with businesses engaging in the boycott of a person or an entity based in or doing business with a jurisdiction with whom South Carolina can enjoy open trade. So it is, if South Carolina enjoys open trade with any country in the world, there can't be any boycott by a public company originating in South Carolina. So other states are following the suit. 
we have to stop spending or sending aid to corrupt regimes. We have to block the funds in the Western banks that came as a result of illicit financial outflows via crime, corruption, tax evasion. We have to develop mechanisms to retrieve illicit financial outflows that came via crime, corruption, tax evasion to impoverished taxpayers of the robbed countries. We need to close the loopholes in the banking system which allow money laundering for corrupt and authoritarian regimes for terrorism and organized crime. And we need to have more transparency, introduce mandatory beneficial ownership of the accounts and for the entities. And uh, I think that uh, this is what we will have to do in order to have people you know, live in their countries with high economic freedoms, they will be able to prosper. And um, uh, we also know that uh, in, from the US side, there have been now uh, new initiatives uh, through institutions, through FBI, which has set International Corruption Unit recently. They have squads in New York and DC, and they are focused on kleptocracy and uh, you know, finding, the, finding the assets that have been uh, practically robbed from taxpayers of these countries that are living under dictatorships and authoritarian regimes. Thank you so much. Thank you.